When two mutually insoluble substances come into contact, there's an interface between them. This is a special region where we can observe phenomena which do not occur inside either substance. A water-air interface. If one substance is a gas, like air, and the other a liquid or a solid, the interface is called a surface. The surface of a liquid is not absolutely flat. If it's surrounded by gas on all sides, a liquid takes the form of a sphere. These phenomena are all due to special forces that work on the surface of the liquid. The liquid molecules undergo continual thermal motion. At the same time, they're attracted to one another by forces of interaction. Let's consider one particular molecule in a liquid. The attractive forces are the same in all directions, so it's not drawn in any particular direction. A molecule at the surface, however, is not influenced by a force from outside. In fact, the oxygen and nitrogen molecules in the air do work on the surface molecule, but their influence is negligible. So the overall effect is a pulling inwards of the surface molecules. This force, pulling from within, works to reduce the surface area. This special force, working on the liquid surface, is called surface tension. If the interacting force between the molecules is weak, the surface tension is weak. If the force is strong, the surface tension is strong. This simple experiment shows that the surface tension of a liquid works to reduce the surface area as much as possible. The natural result of these forces is the sphere, as this has the smallest surface area for a given volume of liquid. Here, the surface tension is being measured using a Denui tensiometer. A platinum ring is submerged in the water, then slowly raised. Water is pulled up with the ring because of surface tension. But beyond a certain limit, the weight of the water will exceed the force of surface tension. The value of the surface tension is determined by this limit. It's expressed in dynes per centimeter. Every liquid has a fixed value of surface tension. Oil, for instance, has a lower surface tension than water because the internal forces working on the surface oil molecules are less than those affecting water molecules. Everybody knows that oil and water do not mix. Here's the interface between water and oil. At this interface, the molecules of water and oil are attracted to each other. The interfacial molecules of water, which are in contact with the oil, are pulled by a force 
much greater than that affecting the molecules in contact with air. So the overall inward pull is reduced. Even so, this force still acts to reduce the interfacial area. This is called interfacial tension. When this interfacial tension is strong enough, it acts much like surface tension to make one of the liquids form a sphere or drop. The almost perfect spheres seen here are formed by an oil with a specific gravity close to that of water. Most oils float on water but the oil cannot retain its spherical form when it comes into contact with air because of its own surface tension. Certain oils may spread to become a thin film on the surface. Let's consider a liquid A on which liquid B is floating. The surface tension of liquid A tends to reduce the surface area. Similarly, the surface of B has its own surface tension. And the interface between A and B is under the influence of an interfacial tension which tends to reduce the interfacial area. These three forces converge at a point where the air and liquids A and B meet. Each force works in a different direction. The surface tension of A tends to pull B and extend it. By contrast, the surface tension of B and the interfacial tension between A and B work together to prevent the extension of B. The difference between these two forces determines the state of the floating liquid B, either spread out or remaining in globules. The degree of extension of B on A differs according to the values of A and B as these different types of oil indicate. So far, we've considered the interface between two different liquids, but the phenomenon is similar between a liquid and a solid. For example, water does not spread on wax. This is because of the high interfacial tension between water and wax. Oil, on the other hand, does spread, because this time the interfacial tension is lower than before. But these tensions can be changed drastically by application of a synthetic detergent or soap. Now, soap solution is added to the water. The water spreads like oil. Soap consists mainly of sodium stearate. The molecule has a chain-like structure. The structure of the molecule comprises two parts. One, similar in structure to fat, a raw material for soap, will mix with wax or oil. This is called the lipophilic group. The other portion of the sodium stearate molecule has an affinity with water. This is the hydrophilic group. When soap dissolves in water, its molecules arrange themselves on the surface with the lipophilic group pointing outwards. Since the lipophilic group is similar in nature to oil, the surface tension of the soap solution is much less than that for pure water and is closer to that of oil. The interfacial tension between water and wax is also reduced by the sodium stearate molecule.
The interfacial tension between woolen fabrics and water is quite high. Soap solution, however, can reduce it. Woolen fabrics are not easily wetted, but if soap is applied, the process is much easier. Like sodium stearate in soap, some other substances have lipophilic and hydrophilic groups within the same molecule and can help to reduce the interfacial tension between different materials. We call these substances surface active agents or surfactants. Here is a water oil interface. Now a surfactant solution is applied. The distinct water oil interface becomes unstable. The interfacial tension is reduced, so the oil begins to extend. Even the slightest disturbance in the water will break the oil into small particles. The turbidity and opacity are due to minute particles of oil. In this way, one liquid mixes with another in the form of minute particles, a phenomenon known as emulsification. Emulsification is accelerated by stirring. Now a detergent is dissolved in water. A piece of greasy cloth is dipped in the detergent solution. Oily or fatty dirt is removed in the form of small particles. Detergents and soap remove dirt by the actions, such as emulsification, of their main ingredient, the surfactant. Removal of dirt is one of the most familiar of interfacial phenomena. The many other applications of surfactant technology extend into the realms of physics, chemistry and electricity. They reveal the many interesting facets of this special region. The interface.